Hello everybody and welcome to this tutorial. Today I will introduce you to the Linux terminal and show you some of its basic functionalities. So in Kali Linux, terminal icon is located in the upper left corner, this black thing. So just click on it and there you go. You have the terminal up and running here. By default it opens up a root terminal in Kali. So if you want to, usually people want to configure it, but if you want to, if you don't want to configure anything else, this is perfectly fine. You don't actually need to do anything else. However, 99% of the time people will configure the terminal f to suit their own needs and purposes. For example, I will always, almost always increase the font size so that it is clear and visible and that I have a better overview of what I am doing at the moment and it also reduces eye strain according to some articles. Anyway, so just go ahead and uh, right click anywhere on the terminal itself, not on the bar, but on the terminal itself. And then you have show menu bar. Now we can see it here. Go ahead and click on edit. You can click on profiles as well and create new profiles here by just typing in, by just clicking on new, giving it the name and then configuring it in the preferences. However, uh, we're going to be configuring the default profile since there really is no need to create any additional ones. Go ahead and click on profile preferences and here you have a great deal of options. One of the first ones that you will see is that you can use a system fixed with font. So this is not good. You see this is very small. You do need I, I always need to change that. If that's fine for you, you can keep it like that, but I always change it. And I have mono space 20. If you click on it, you can change the font size here. If you wish, you can change the font that you're using. And that would be it as far as this place is concerned. You have some other very simple options here. It says show menu bar by default in new terminals. I generally take it. I think it's a good idea since you always need to do something like open up a new tab or something of a kind, but you don't need to. You have the cursor shape here. It says block, I beam, underline. Just want to show you how it looks like. You can view the terminal as the changes are applied. So you have a block and you have an underline. I prefer a block. You can use whatever you wish. It will not affect you. It will not affect you in any, te in any technical sense, that is have title and command. Uh, we don't actually need to change anything there. You can change the title if you wish. We have colors. So I think that this color scheme is appropriate and fitting for me, but you can change it any way you like. You can customize it to the point of extreme. Uh, you can change the text color, the background color. You have the pal color, color palette here. So you can do whatever you want here. You have built-in schemes. So you have, it says white on black. I can say green on black or, oops, sorry, cancel. I can say green on black. Uh, does it have blue on black? No, black. Oh, this one's bad. I wouldn't be able to work on this one. So let's just leave it at black on, uh, white on black, sorry. This is the best color. This is one of the best color schemes. I use a personally. I use on Fedora blue on black, but I'm just going to leave it as it is here. No need to actually change anything. Now, in background, there's an in, there. Are, you have three features here basically. You have solid color like this one here that you are seeing, and you ca you can choose a background image. You can download anything you want from the internet, pretty much. You can configure it to be transparent or image background. And also you have the ability to have a trans fully transparent background. And if you click on transparent background, it's pretty much the same as having a background image, except in this case, excellent, I'm just going to configure it to transparency levels, and that's pretty good. Except in this case, your background image will be your desktop image, pretty much, depending on where your terminal is. In scrolling, there's an important feature here, it's scroll back, so you don't want to have 512 lines, you want to go ahead and click on unlimited unless you're severely limited in terms of RAM and unless you're typing in a large amount of commands or something of a kind, but in any case it's better to have unlimited especially in, envir 
especially in not only in environments such as these but rather instead in cases such as these you don't need to do anything here in terms of compat compatibility I'm just gonna go ahead and close this and I have selected a transparent background and you see this only works for a desktop image it doesn't actually show icons or anything of a kind if I open up my web browser it's not gonna show it in the background it's still gonna keep the uh, desktop background image so the desktop wallpaper should you wish to call it so there's a slight delay when it goes about in the update but it's fine doesn't bother us in the slightest bit maybe I will change this later on during the tutorial see how I like it but I just wanted to give you an option so you can do whatever you want with it in any case you can go ahead and click on file and open tab I'm just gonna go ahead and open myself four tabs three new ones and one that I already had so here you can switch in between them it's very nice there's no there are no complications for example if I press open up a new terminal I gotta click here and then I gotta click here and usually you're gonna have I'm just wanna show you what it's like to have four of them so yeah this is not actually manageable especially because you don't know what you are doing on which terminal people sometimes split their screens into terminals I sometimes do that it's very nice but we will deal with that a bit later on when we get into some serious stuff when we actually need multiple terminals but tabs it's uh, tabbing these tab tabbing these terminals it's very nice primarily because you can actually see what you're doing on each one of them in the header see these things that I'm selecting that I'm clicking on now they are headers of the terminal or so you can call them and if I for example in this terminal I'm gonna go ahead and say I want you to go into home change directory to home change the working directory that is and if I change it here to var and if I change it here to var logs uh, and if I want to go here to DMP folder excellent so on each of these tabs uh, in their headers I can see where I am so this this one it's home uh, this one it's DMP I don't need to click on it to know this one is log so I can know what I'm doing in every particular terminal and even though you can have a programming or something like that it's still gonna write it out in the header and you're gonna get some extra information there it's very nice very useful and it's gonna help you out a lot as we progress through this course and as we get into more complicated stuff anyway I just want to introduce you to the Linux terminal we have done some work with it before during the installation of VirtualBox and VirtualBox guest editions but basically there I've just given you the command and you're gonna basically just rewrite it or copy paste it and that's gonna be it but here I will in the follow-up tutorial actually I will start explaining the fundamental Linux terminal commands the most common ones the basic ones and there you will be able to see the logic of things and how this Linux terminal works and functions because once you actually learn that it gives you a huge amount of power all the power of an operating system rests on its terminal because it's a direct interface to the kernel of the system and it's a lot faster than the graphical interface now one more keynote that I would like to make here uh, once I teach you how to use the Linux terminal and once you get into habit of typing in commands you can use them for a wide variety of purposes you ne not necessarily need to use these things uh, for pen testing or something like that you can use these commands for network administration or you can use them in order to troubleshoot problems with the system and so on and so forth so you get a you get a far wider spectrum of options in terms of jobs or something of a kind as opposed to just learning something that you can only use for pen testing and nothing else in any case I bid you farewell and I hope to see you in the next tutorial.